All right, here we go, guys. Uh, so this is Yarrow, and hello. You're probably very familiar with me already if you're <laughs> watching me do a vlog like this, a video blog. Um, why am I doing this? So first of all, I just want to preface this by the fact that uh, I've just got together a whole bunch of new video equipment. Uh, I'm recording this on a GoPro 7 Hero Black. I've got a, a plug-in mic for it, which is uh, meant to help with obviously the feedback noise. I'm in a really quiet space here in my apartment in Vancouver, which I'm about to move away from. Um, I've got my Gorilla Pod set up. I've got an LED light set up. I've got my phone here with the notes that I want to talk to you about. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is that it's brand new and it's going to get better. So I probably haven't quite figured out the lighting, the sound, um, the positioning of my body. I was watching before trying to get the right space above me here. GoPro has this wide view angle with the camera so you can see no doubt already all this stuff in the background. So I haven't you know, made the background too pretty other than my nice little pillow here. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to say it's going to get better, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of just getting out there and creating the content and you know, incremental improvement as you go along. And also the kind of point of me doing this is I, I want to start doing vlogs as I travel. So this is a test of the equipment and there's a few reasons why I want to do this. So first of all, uh, when I, uh, at night, I often am, I guess, the worst at procrastinating and uh, wasting time. I, I have the lowest willpower. You probably, you feel the same as me, no doubt. M maybe some of you are, you know, really good at working at night, but I rarely do uh, much work at night. I, I'm definitely sitting on the couch. Uh, you know, I, I've got the weakest willpower when it comes to food. So, uh, and speaking of food, I actually have pretty much given up sugar, uh, refined sugars, fructose, lactose. Uh, I wasn't drinking milk anyway, so lactose was gone a long time ago. Um, fruit was mostly gone except for bananas and smoothies. Um, obviously refined sugar, cane sugar was out of my diet, but now I'm cutting even like my old favorite chocolate. You probably, uh, seen me if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook put up some ketogenic recipes and um, uh, well not recipes uh, recipes yes but also me cooking them so I made some cookies I made some fat bombs uh, the reason why they're they're keto is primarily because that's the best to find a recipe that's got no sugar yet has some kind of sweetener that still tastes good. So in this case, I'm using a lot of monk fruit and stevia. Those are the two that work well for me. Um, erythritol and xylitol, uh, tried them both. I, I react a bit to those two because they're um, uh, prebiotics, I think. Prebiotics or probiotics? Whatever the case may be, I, I have a, a bit of a reaction to them. So I try not to have those two. But monk fruit is fantastic and stevia is pretty good. And they have very uh, low uh, in, impact on your body with your insulin levels. Uh, so also with keto, you know, trying to keep your carb count down to stay in ketosis. Uh, it's all good. And I, I have to say, I love, I love the cookies and I love the, um, the, the fat bombs in particular, which is basically almond butter and cacao, but they're, they're chocolatey and really nice. So, um, I've, you know, become pretty much since the start of this year, 2019, way better with my sugar intake, almost down to zero now. I'm still having smoothies and things, but I'm trying to even get that down to zero. And when I say smoothies, it's really just the, the banana, half a banana in it is where the sugar is. But the, the point being at night was when I would generally eat most of my chocolate, you know, it would be the whole 100 grams of a, a, almost 100 grams. I'd finish off 100 gram green and blacks, 85% dark chocolate bar. Now that's still not a lot of sugar that's probably 15 grams in a 100 gram bar because it's about 15 percent sugar uh but it's it's a pretty regular daily habit and if you add that you know a smoothie in and probably some sugars here and there you'd find snuck into food it, it did add up so i'm trying to get down to as close to zero as i can and get that that sugar craving handled with the keto desserts, which is working really well. I actually really do like those desserts. Um, obviously it's a mental thing as well. The fact that I even need to still look for keto desserts shows that I haven't broken free from the, the mental connection there, the, the addiction uh, to it, but it's an improvement, a big one. And I'm certainly big on incremental improvements. So uh, the why, why I bring all this up, night times I'm trying to replace some of my bad habits with some better habits. And vlogging and doing these videos, I, I love creating content. So I thought, you know what, I should start actually using some of my nighttime 
for two things. Uh, one is these create some content and this is something I can easily do. So I wanted to set up this camera equipment so I can be anywhere in the world, plonk my, my gorilla pod down with my GoPro and my light and my microphone and some notes on my phone and just do a vlog. And if I can do it almost daily, fantastic. It probably won't be daily. I'm not going to promise any sort of consistency whatsoever. I'm going to do this as I feel. Um, but I, I like ha having the option, especially as I travel, because uh, often as I travel, and this is something I'm trying to work on this year as I begin some digital nomading, I don't have a lot of friends in certain places. So I, I often land in, in new cities and I, I'm an introvert. So, um, you know, I'm not going to be excited about pushing myself into social circumstances. I will do that to try and build my, my friendship circle. And I'm going to deliberately choose to visit places where I know people already so I can, you know, have people on the ground and, and uh, hopefully meet some of you, perhaps watching this video uh, or my videos I'll do throughout the year. But the point being, I will be able to have a few good healthy options for spending my nights, not just Netflix by myself and being tempted to eat too much food and, you know, sugars again and so forth. So this gives me something fun to do. The other thing I want to do uh, as the point too is be a bit more social. So I will you know, use my time at night perhaps to look for social things to do in new cities, maybe even do some phone calls with friends around the world. Crazy. I'm not a, a big phone talker, but I'm, I do want to keep connections strong with people, certain people, try and deepen some connections with some of my friends and grow some new friendships. Uh, hopefully that will become deep as well. So uh, my night times, I want to do that perhaps instead of just sitting on this couch here and, you know, watching four hours of Netflix, which is pretty easy to do, or, you know, even just surfing the web, watching YouTube, still plan on doing that. It just, you know, I want options, good, healthy options. So uh, that's kind of like my little intro done here. Like I said, I plan to get better in the future. Obviously, I also want to do this because I want to keep a, an ongoing dialogue with you guys. One of the things that I miss about my old content creation uh, back in the early days with my blog was I would be always writing stories about what I was implementing and learning and benefiting from and, and what's working in my business as a kind of a regular blogging practice, because that was what blogging was about, telling, you know, the, the journal, the, the, um, the online diary, uh, diarizing of whatever your blog is about. And my blog was an entrepreneurship blog, so I would write all kinds of stuff about how my card game business was going, my, my editing company was going, and then my, my blogging coaching business, how that was going. And then, you know, over time, you, you kind of get a little bit lost in all the other things that you can uh, do online, all the social media pops up. I have more businesses. I have my team growing, so I have to coordinate working with them. It just became much different the way I, I create content, way more strategic, way more focused. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, I knuckled down and created product. I created email funnels. Um, my blog content became much more specific in terms of guiding people to opt-ins and teaching key lessons. So it wasn't as as diarizing what was going on. And I don't think I can go back to that in terms of my writing. I still need to be quite strategic with my writing time and use it that way, whether it's writing a book or an email sequence or notes for a product. But this I can do. I can talk to you guys for half an hour to an hour and update you on what I did maybe even the last 24 hours, which can be very much about, you know, business things or money making related things it can also be social things and travel. You know, I, I'm I love uh, sharing where I visit and I want to share more of that with you. Uh, I'm not aiming to be like a super pro vlogger with amazing editing. This could be as good as it gets. It could be me sitting in front of whatever Airbnb couch I'm at and talking to you. If that's the case and I only have, you know, 10 people watching these videos, that's fine. I'm kind of doing it as much for me as I'll be doing it for you guys watching. So I don't mind, but hey, who knows? Maybe we'll get a following and it'll grow over time. I do know one thing is the hardcore Yarrow fans out there, you guys will be watching this all the way to the end. So I'm doing this for you very much as well. Uh, and, and I know from my point of view, I love getting that background insight from other entrepreneurs. One of my favorite things to do when I do have dinner with someone is like, what are they working on? You know, I catch up with some of my friends and I'm like, uh, wh what did you just do with your business most recently? You know, what's working? What are you planning on next? And I love that behind the scenes uh, specifics. What what are they actioning? What are they building? What do they just create? What marketing techniques are they, are they doing that work? So I can do the same thing for you in these videos. I've got some notes here to talk about uh, basically my day to day uh, and everything that happened. So it'll give you a real insight into kind of like a day in the life on an ongoing basis. 
or it might completely change because frankly, um, I never want to promise any kind of specific outcome when it comes to my content creation because it things inev inevitably change. Directions change, goals change, timing changes. So who knows, I may only do one video like this and this is it or not. But I certainly hope I can uh, continue some kind of ongoing dialogue with you. So continuing on with that theme, I want to talk a little bit about uh, today, you know, uh, this has uh, been a fun day. It's been a fantastic day, actually. So I really had a lot that I felt like talking about. Maybe that's kind of what triggered this idea as well to do this uh, video, and maybe also because I want to share uh, or test out my new GoPro to see what the you know what it looks like, and I want to share this on YouTube and Facebook and then see what the reaction is. So um, this is going to be great too for those of you who are maybe just starting a new business to sort of really see what people who are running successful online businesses get up to on a daily basis. I'm not going to say I'm I'm typical. I'm certainly not going to say I'm the most effective or efficient, but I am running three different companies as well as doing property investing and traveling, you know, and trying to have a social life and trying to eat healthy. Uh, and, you know, I was trying to find the next place to live. Uh, so there's a lot going on and you can see it happen in a day to day basis. So I'm going to really, if I can hopefully fit it all in into these videos, get into some very unique specifics. Now, for most people, it's probably going to be too boring and you probably already have um, left this video and you're not watching. But for those of you still here, I'm really glad you are because you are going to learn some interesting stuff, especially over time if you really keep up with what I'm, I'm doing and see how the incremental steps lead to a result that you're probably working towards because it's all these little things I do each day that lead to the sales of my products or the, you know, the finding of new customers, the building of teams, um, the creation of wealth and the ability to travel, building machines, you know, freedom vehicles, laptop lifestyle businesses. So, you know, I've been doing this for, uh, whew, we're heading almost to year 20. Can you imagine at the end of this year, 20 years online since I started my first online business? People have called me an OG. Um, I guess I am. So especially in internet years. Uh, and, and that's great. It's been a blessing that I've been able to you know do what I do for this long, never had a full time job. So it's because of these things I'm going to share with you that I continue to do day after day that makes this work. So first of all, I want to start kind of like at the beginning of the day, uh, give you a bit of background. So I started doing some property investing in Montreal. You might have seen on my social, I put up a few pictures of uh, my first investment property there, triplex in Montreal, uh, which means three apartments, uh, two two bedrooms and one one bedroom on the ground floor, all with tenants when I purchased it end of last year, December 2018. And what's happened in literally the last well, three weeks, it's been uncanny how these things kind of happen all at once. but. I had this experience where the neighbor called up and uh, basically told me that they're fixing a sewage pipe and it's going to impact my uh, staircase at the front of my building. And as they were doing that, the, the plumbers and the excavators found out that the sewage pipe on my side also needs repair and it was going to cost $7,000 to fix it just out of out, you know by itself if they fix it right now as they're fixing my neighbor's one it'll only be five thousand dollars total so that was a nice five thousand dollar surprise i was not happy about um, i was looking into the possibility of getting that reimbursed from the person i bought the property from because it's called a hidden defect uh, that's not uh, well it's a work in progress it's not looking like it's going to happen i'm probably going to be out of pocket for that myself, which is unfortunate. You know, it's $5,000 just poof, gone, new investment property. Um, it's a tax deduction. It's kind of expected wear and tear, buildings need repair. It's just un unexpected and unfortunate that it came so quickly. I could try and get the money back, but I'm probably gonna end up not bothering because I have a philosophy. If, if the, the amount of money is, you know, not $100,000, $50,000, it's kind of like under $10,000. I'd rather use the time and energy to do something fun to make money, to make an, another $5,000 rather than do the not so fun things like, you know, contact lawyers, um, have to chase someone up about something that's not, you know, I'm trying to get money from someone else when they don't want to really give it to me. That's not fun. Lots of forms to fill out, lots of discussions that are just, you know, it's it's all negative stuff. So, uh, yeah, some people love love that, you know, beating the the, the, the bad guy. They, they want to be kind of righteous. As I said, I prefer to do the fun thing and uh, make more money. And I've had this philosophy from the very beginning. I've often 
you know, wasted money, spent money in ways I probably shouldn't have, certainly um, lost money in, on things where I, I, if I was a little bit more focused on, you know, getting things back using the legal system, uh, I could have uh, recovered money or saved money. But I often just said, you know what, I'd rather just go and teach another course or write a few more blog posts or whatever I was doing at the time and make more money doing the things that I enjoy. So that's a philosophy I will pass on to you as one I hope you adopt as well. It has served me well, certainly for my happiness over the years. So that happened, the broken pipe and the sewage pipe. And then uh, shortly after that happened, uh, a tenant emailed me saying they will not be able to pay 100% of their rent uh, they only have half of it and they have got in a, a subtenant, so someone they're bringing into the spare room, but that person hasn't paid rent to them yet, so that's why they can't pay me. Now, obviously, this tenant owes me the money, uh, and unfortunately, this has happened again within the first three months of me buying a brand new property. So that's two things that happen. Now, whenever there's two things that happen, I get a kind of feeling there's going to be a third. These things come in threes. I actually had an experience about 10 years ago when I lived in my first ever property I purchased way back in, in Mitchelton in Brisbane, Australia. It was a, uh, a townhouse and I lived there for like two years, didn't have a single problem. I then moved out and brought in a tenant and within the first six months of that tenant living there, they had a, a broken washing machine, then a pipe burst in the upstairs bathroom which flooded the, all the carpets and damaged the walls. Thankfully insurance covered that one. They had to move out so I had to even use the insurance to cover their hotel. And then the door broke. So I had three things happen within the space of, uh, you know, the first six months of those tenants moving in. And I'm like, how come nothing happened when I lived there? But as soon as someone new comes in, everything goes wrong. It's a universe thing. I'm not going to try and answer that question, but it's happened again. So within the first three months of owning this one, I've had a, a third thing now happen. So the broken sewage pipe, the tenant not being able to pay their rent, which is still, by the way, a work in progress. I'm still trying to figure that out with the tenant. Um, I'm, I'm actually kind of hoping they might move out because then I'll move my stuff in. All this stuff here, this is a one bedroom worth of stuff that I own, uh, that I bought because I lived in Toronto in my own apartment for one year. And I moved it here to Vancouver. I'm renting here for a year, but I've just finished my lease. And now I'm moving to Montreal and I want to move this stuff into an apartment there and then live there when I'm in town to invest in property and then Airbnb that space when I'm not there. And uh, I'm hoping maybe this tenant who's a little bit, you know, uh, wishy-washy with the money will, will decide to move out and I can move in and put my stuff in there and then Airbnb it and live in there. So that's the plan at the moment. I'm still in discussions with him trying to get a, get a hold of him on the phone. Um, yeah, but the third thing, now this is really uncanny. So I was speaking to my real estate agent uh, today on the phone, um, uh, Anna. A shout out to Anna. She's fantastic and loving working with her in Montreal. She's a lot of fun. And... Uh, so um, I'm on the phone telling her all these, these the updates about um, the sewage pipe, what happened with the, trying to get the money back from the previous owner and trying to get the tenant to pay the second half of the rent or get them to move out. And then I said to her jokingly, I told that story that I just told you guys about Brisbane and the three problems I had there. And the third one was the door broke. Now I tell Anna this and then I hang up the phone after talking to her. I open up my phone and on the email is an email from one of the other tenants in the building telling me that that day they couldn't get into the house because the lock was not working on the front door and they had to call in someone to fix it, fix it. And it cost like $170 and they're, you know, asking whether I will pay for it. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I literally just talked about that on the phone uh, with Anna, my real estate agent, telling that story about it happening to me in Brisbane as the third thing that broke. And it just happened again as the third thing, as I was talking to Anna about it. Now, I don't know if you're a Law of Attraction fan or not. I'm certainly, uh, a fan is not the right word. I am a, I love it. I think it's just fun. And I think if you, you know, can tap into it, hey, it sounds pretty powerful if you can sort of, you know, use it to your benefit to go after things you want. Uh, obviously, I don't want uh, a broken door and, and a, a repair bill to pay, but it kind of blew my mind. I was like, wow, I said it and it happened. Uh, if you choose to believe in that kind of correlation on a, on a universal energetic whatever kind of level and i do choose to it, i think it's fun and it's beneficial if you kind of get it working right yeah just checking my battery here oh yeah we got heaps of time and uh 20 minutes all right this is good i can uh, i can ramble on and you guys can listen so have some green juice so i found that uncanny that was the first thing that happened today where i was like whoa a bit of law of attraction or a bit of energetic uh interesting stuff going on so after that 
Um, that was the end of the property phase of my day. Most of that happened in the morning here in Vancouver. And then I just went to work basically a little bit with my team on Slack. Um, Yulia, who works with me in Ukraine. Hello to Yulia. I bet you you're watching this. Yulia is one of my best fans for content online. She watches all my stories and we talk on Facebook as well as work together. Um, good friend back in, in Lviv in Ukraine, who I will be seeing again in uh, July for my birthday. Um, so I'm working with her. She's actually doing a sweep of my blog. So you probably know my blog, yarrow.blog is the, the actual address now. And when we did uh, the redesign and the rebranding, the, the new domain name to yarrow.blog, which by the way, I, I've yet to really explain to you guys the whole reason why I switched to yarrow.blog. I'm in the middle of writing a blog post to kind of talk about that. So that'll go live sometime later this year. I might even talk about it on the video at some point too. Whatever the case may be, when that happened, or just afterwards, uh, Yulia came on board my team to do what we called, or to continue doing what we had started with other members of my team. We call it the blog sweep. So this was going into my blog and going to all my old blog posts. Now you gotta understand, my blog started in 2004, or you know, 2005 really, January. And that's a lot of content. That's a lot of really old content. That's a, con a lot of content that is just not relevant anymore. Some needs to be deleted. Most of it needs to be updated, you know, with relevant links, with uh, a style guide. So it kind of uh, lines up with all the more recent content. So that's what she's been working on. She, um, yeah, she's been slowly but surely diving into all my old blog posts. You can imagine what kind of job this is. So thank you, Yulia, for doing this. Uh, just cleaning it up, just making sure everything works. Uh, we're hoping it'll benefit certainly our search traffic. It'll definitely benefit usability. Um, just the job you got to do on a, a fairly large old blog. So I'm, I'm really happy she's doing that. Uh, she's also been doing something else, which I wanted to mention. The Blog Profits Blueprint probably aware of that. That's my, my most prominent lead magnet. It's a free report. It's, uh, it's amazing. I'll be honest, not humble about it. It is a fantastic free resource for anyone who wants to learn how to make money with content, essentially blogging and email marketing and selling digital products. The model that my coaching business is built on, it's made me over $2 million in product sales. And it's a pretty good introductory guide to the whole business model and how to do that, how to make money blogging, email marketing, content, and so on. You can get it at blogprofitsblueprint.com. And what Yulia has just finished doing is we just update it every year, you know, make sure the links are working, um, change a few little things here and there. So she's been doing that as well as cleaning up some things that, you know, need to be changed, like the dates. It, it says 2018. It's now going to be a 2019 version of the blueprint. So, you know, little, little boring thing that has to happen behind the scenes with your information publishing business. Um, and one other thing I want to mention, I've also been sending files off to my accountant. Uh, talk about a boring subject. So I, I, please don't leave. I know you might be tempted as I talk about accountant stuff, but I do want to be transparent and say some of the important things that go on behind the scenes. So yeah, I had to uh, send off some of my rental receipts from my property in Brisbane that I sold this year, the, the documentation around the sale to explain how much I've sold it for and all the associated costs. And that's just the start of doing my personal tax return. So that's what's been um, uh, a part of my day today. And I'll be honest with you, it's not a lot of fun. Uh, I, uh, who likes accounting? Only accountants like accounting, I think. I hope they do anyway. So it's it's a necessary evil once a year uh, and a part of the process. Thankfully, I've got Receipt Bank and Zero Cloud Accounting. So a lot of my my tracking is just forwarding emails throughout the year and my, my bookkeeper and my accountant just do it all and process it all for me. And I, you know, I spend a bit of money. I think it's like 700 bucks a month so it ends up being a, almost 10 grand a year but it's it makes my job so much less they do it all for me and that's uh, uh you know it's a, it's a tax deduction of course they always remind me of that it's funny how accountants always tell you that their fees are a tax deduction um so that was that's kind of like the 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 Yarrow coaching business stuff that happened plus the Yarrow personal tax stuff um i also had a, a brief conversation with andre my ukrainian business partner in Pure Power, our solar energy business. Uh, our first solar pl power plant is up and running. We're, we're generating power and, and generating revenue uh, over in Lviv. So when I go there for my birthday in July, part of the reason is to get some cool uh, photo shots with my new drone and you know take a selfie with Andre in front of our power plant. 
our, our solar array. Um, so we, and, Andre and I have had a couple of surprise changes. Uh, the way the the, the sort of the, the the whole thing is set up in terms of the financing because we had to we're working with a local bank as well. Way too long a story for me to go into here, but I just wanted to mention that that's another person I'm dialoguing with uh, quite frequently. Uh, my co-founder in a company, oops, in uh, in in uh, Ukraine, and that's that's a business that most of the hard work's done. It's set up. It's going to generate energy. We we make a steady income for ten years. First, we're paying back loans, and then it'll turn into just you know revenue for all of us. But yeah, it's um, it's something I enjoy doing as well. And I like talking to Andre. It's always fun. So that that happened today. Then I went to the gym. Now uh, the gym is something I go do almost every single day, usually at night. Uh, so you might find me doing these videos after the gym, which is probably a good idea because I'm usually really happy after the gym. You know, after exercise, it, it is a great feeling. Uh, while I was there, I just wanted to share because I'm always interested in what podcasts other people listen to, and I generally listen to podcasts and audio books while I'm at the gym. Um, today I was listening to the new Jay uh, Jay Shetty podcast. Uh, I saw Jay. In person in uh, LA a couple of weeks ago for the Mind Valley event. Well, I saw him on a stage. I didn't actually meet him in person, unfortunately. That would have been nice. Um, one day I'll meet you, Jay. I'm sure we'll cross paths at some point. Uh, and Jay interviewed Novak Djokovic. Uh, if you know me, you know I love tennis. It's my number one sport. I'm a huge follower, not a huge player anymore. I played a lot when I was a teenager in my 20s. Now I don't. I really should get back on the court a bit more. I'll, I'll play with my aunt. Hi, Diane. Um, but yeah, I, I follow tennis every day. I literally read all the news sites, see who's winning. Um, I'm especially loving it now because so many Canadians are doing well. I used to follow the Aussies because I lived in Australia and they're not quite as good at the moment as they were back when I was growing up when it was Pat Rafter and Leighton Hewitt and Mark Philippoussis. And now I'm living in Canada, or at least I, I have been. Uh, now I've got, uh, well, a few people. There's Denis Shapovalov. His name is really tricky to say. Some people screw it up. He's from uh, uh, Toronto, where, where my family's from. Um, and then there's, uh, uh, who is it? Um, Andriscu, the one who just won the Indian Wells, an 18-year-old girl. She's amazing. I watched her win that live. And also uh, Felix Agur-Alessiem. His name is even harder to say. <laughs> a couple of French Canadians there. And he's another young 18-year-old, uh, really tall and doing amazing. So there's these three young, very young. They're like 19, 18, and 18. So it bodes very well for Canadian tennis. So I've been, you know, enjoying... I enjoy all tennis, though. I'm a Roger Federer fan and a you know, Nadal fan. But I'm actually a really big Novak Djokovic fan. And that's why I love to hear this podcast. I listened to the one that Lewis Howes did with Novak, and he also interviewed Maria Sharapova. Um, what was especially cool, though, I don't know if you know this, but Novak and his wife, uh, they're kind of, there's a bit of a crossover happening. And I, this is fantastic. I'm so happy about this. Where, because Novak went gluten-free, then he went vegan because he had all these energy problems during the early stages of his career. And his wife was also very into, you know, spirituality and personal growth. So Novak and his wife, are crossing over into almost my industry, probably your industry too, our industry. I feel like, you know, internet marketing, internet business, entrepreneurship, there's a Venn diagram that crosses over with personal development, uh, self, uh, you know, uh, self-improvement and spirituality. You know, people in one group are often interested in the other. I know I am. I'm interested in all those subjects. And now Novak and his wife are also very much interested in like healthy eating, veganism, you know, all the science behind all that. But they're getting very spiritual as well. And, and Jay being uh, used to be a monk, he's super spiritual and also huge on, on Facebook videos. You've probably seen some of his videos at some point. Very positive, very inspirational, and, you know, interesting topics, you know, relationships, mindset, positivity. Um, he's, he does some great stuff and he, he's got these piercing eyes. I'm sure you've seen them, these blue piercing eyes, this amazing British accent, yet he's a monk or used, used to be. So yeah, Jay, Jay's stuff is good. And I, if there's tennis combined with spirituality, combined with people I know, uh, like Lewis Howes also interviewing Novak, I'm loving that my, my favorite worlds are mixing together. So one day I, I hope to sit down whether it's at a tennis tournament or a podcast with Jay and, and Novak and Lewis and, and Maria and everyone who's crossing over into these worlds. We can only hope, right, guys? Um, but seriously, uh, good podcast. Enjoy that. And wow, you know, Novak's number one in the world and he could be number one 
forever if he takes over Federer he might have more slams if he goes the way he's going and he's younger than Federer and uh it's interesting hearing him talk because you don't hear tennis players talk about the spiritual side of what they're doing you know where they feel they belong in the universe the the greater expanded field that we all are a part of and you know you're not going to have Roger Federer talk about that maybe behind the scenes with friends and family he does but Novak's talking about it, you know, in these fairly public forums on a podcast. So I'm very impressed. Uh, you know, I, you'll probably see me, especially if I continue doing videos like this. I'm going to dive into more spiritual topics. I already mentioned the law of attraction here. So that was um, uh, one thing. And uh, which brings me to my next point I'll, before I do that. Um, so I listened to Novak Djokovic on Jay Shetty's podcast. I also listened to the Verge cast, uh, an episode talking about the breaking up of a fang. You might have heard Elizabeth Warren. She's a nominee or she's running for president, not a nominee yet, but she's running for president uh, in the Democratic side coming up in the 2020 campaign. And she a few weeks ago mentioned she wants to break up the big tech companies if she is elected. And this podcast, the Vergecast team, talked about the impact of that. That was fun. Uh, I love hearing about you know big tech as well. And then as I was leaving the gym, I had this really interesting moment. And this kind of ties back into that law of attraction. You know, whatever you kind of focus on, it, it tends to happen. Me with that conversation with my agent about the door lock being broken and then it actually happening again, literally straight after I had the conversation. It could be coincidence. You don't have to believe anything you like, but I think it's fun to do so. Uh, so I was talking uh, just recently with my friends, uh, Jay Wong and, and Francesca, his girlfriend, uh, Buglis. I never know how to say your last name, Francesca. I'm probably butchering that. But anyway, um, two of my closest friends here in Vancouver, really great uh, digital nomad entrepreneurs and uh, have a lot of fun with them. And we talked a little bit just recently, last time I hung out with them about uh, getting celebrities spotted. So maybe it's a bit of a vain topic, but um, it was uh, a lot of, uh, it's, it's fun topic. And we, we basically talked about times in our lives because of the content we've released online, whether it's through YouTube or blogging or podcasting, which is basically the three things we do. Uh, Francesca's big on YouTube. I'm obviously more, more blogging, a little bit of podcasting, and now a bit of vlogging. And Jay is big on podcasting. And we've all had some point in our life, sometimes several, where we're just out living our lives and someone's come up to us and said, hey, are you Yaro Starak or are you Jay Wong or are you Francesca Pugliese? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm screwing up that last name. And it's a cool moment. The first time it happens, it's like, oh my God. I remember the first time it happened to me. I think it was in Australia, probably back when I had long hair. And, you know, my blog was probably only a year or two old. And someone came up and said, are you Yarrow from Entrepreneur's Journey? And I was like, yeah. I was like, oh my God, I think I'm a celebrity. Obviously, you know, not the kind of celebrity who has paparazzi and stalkers but you get these moments where you meet your readers or your listeners or your watchers and it's awesome so I will encourage you if you ever see me out there as long as you're not a crazy person please come up and say hello to me because I, I love it and I want to hear about you I want to hear about what you're up to I love hearing you say nice things about me <laughs> I will never get tired of that um, and it hasn't happened in a while uh, it's happened a few times in Australia and in Europe and maybe in Canada for me and I and uh, obviously Jay and Francesca had a few times, but it happened again today. And this is what blew my mind. So I was just talking about this with Jay and Francesca, and it's something I haven't thought about for a long time because it hasn't happened to me in a long time. So a couple of days ago, I'm having this conversation. And then today, uh, Jordan, I hope I'm getting her name right. I might get that wrong. He came up to me and said hello at the gym. He said he, he was uh, reading my stuff about two years ago. He now lives in Vancouver. He's French, had a quite a, a heavy French accent. And it was awesome. You know, I, I just, it, it brightened up my day. Um, it, you know, my blog and everything I do, it's so crowded online now. So, you know, I'm one of so many. Um, it's nice to be reminded that there are people who are still discovering you, you know, brand new. Like most people who know me will say, oh, I followed you in 2009, 2012. Uh, you know, old school people, you, you Super Yarrow fans might have been there all the way back in 2005. I love you guys. That's amazing. But, you know, there's a constant churn, a constant new audience coming online. So it's nice to know you can still reach new people, still connect with them and, uh, you know, have these celebrity moments. So that was a lot of fun today. Um, and I just love the fact that I just talked about it. So I'm like, 
I, I say things and then they happen. So I'm like, I got to use this power to make whatever I want occur. So I started saying, it's funny, I, I sat in the toilet at the gym after Jordan came up and, and said hello, are you Yaro? And I was like, okay, time to use this power. I sat in, in the bathroom and I was like, I'm going to say some things out loud. No one's here with me just to see if they come true. <laughs> and it was, I was, I was laughing as I did it, you know, talking to yourself, but I'm not going to tell you what I said though. That's between me and myself in the bathroom. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. My last, we'll, we'll, we'll start to wound up here. I'm seeing well, 35 minutes. I think that's 35 minutes and the battery's all good and my light's all good. All right. Fantastic. I hope this comes out well, cause man, I'm not going to say it again. That's a lot of talking. Uh, and you know, I'm an introvert. So, uh, and I'm still just getting over a cold. I feel pretty good though. It's not too bad. Uh, end of the day. So I actually just got back from dinner with James Mel. Now you might know James. James is a little bit of a behind the scenes guy, or at least he has been. He's um, uh, has been at least recently, or not recently, but for a long time now, been known as Eben Pagan's right hand guy or his partner or the guy who kind of stepped in and took over Eben's business teaching business. So, you know, Eben Pagan, you might know um he's he's been an internet marketing teacher for many years i've i've recommended him he's he's my first ever mentor in online marketing his dating advice stuff was where i discovered email marketing and content marketing a lot of what i replicated and modeled was his stuff in the early 2000s um so if you're following me you owe a lot of credit to evan as well for coming up with a lot of that stuff and james is an even bigger evan fan to the point where he joined his company and then rose all the way up to becoming a partner and buying in uh, to the company or starting a company with Eben, basically. Um, and I've known James for a few years now, but just because of you know similar shared circles. Uh, however, we both live in Vancouver, and I haven't seen him uh, for dinner or kind of you know hung out with him. And I wanted to make sure I did that before I leave. I'm, I'm about to leave, so we had dinner. And it was fun. I actually interviewed James for my podcast yesterday. So I already kind of had his whole background story in my mind. You will get a chance to listen to that podcast probably in a couple of weeks after this video goes live, when it goes live on my podcast. And my podcasts usually show up on YouTube as well. You, you, so you'll see it on my YouTube channel. Um, but that's really all about James, you know. Now, James became even more important to me recently because I didn't know this, but I discovered about hmm, six months ago that he's an amazingly successful property investor. The guy has 69 doors, which means he has 69 dwellings with tenants living in them. And he's, he's trying to get to 100 and beyond and 200. He's doing amazing. And I took a course that he just created. He, he, it's his first ever course. And it's all about how to buy your first investment property. And I was already like, I'm going to invest in Montreal. That was my plan. And I enrolled in his course because it was just the right timing. Um, James was taught me some great stuff, you know, financing he, he, a lot about what to look for, what to buy, what strategy to apply in terms of, you know, the the way to buy a property and then maybe renovate it, uh, refinance it, buy another one. You know, he's growing so fast, and I obviously I wanted to get my first one, and that's what his course is about how to get your first uh, rental property, um, which I did while I was taking his course. So, you know, I, I became one of his first testimonials as well in his uh, in his Facebook group. And I did a little video for him as well. So we had dinner tonight. Now, James is interesting because he's a, he's definitely a strong introvert. Hello, James. I, don't, I doubt you're going to watch this certainly not all the way to the end, but I'll wait to you just in case. Um, yeah, super introvert. I'd say he's more introverted than me. Um, very driven, very focused. He sticks to one thing, like property investing since he was 25. He's still doing it. He'll still, he'll continue to do it. Um, you know, he doesn't really bounce around as much as maybe I do. I, I, I especially lately in the last couple of years, I've been solar energy business, cryptocurrency, not in that order, actually the other way around. Um, I've been doing angel investing in, in some tech startups. Uh, I've obviously had my coaching business, which has changed a bit. And I started Inbox Done, my email management company, which you'll probably hear a lot about over the over the time. I work on it all the time. Um, and then I've got this, you know, property, or oh, I mentioned property invest. No, I, met, I haven't mentioned property investing in there. So, you know, I'm, I'm jumping around a bit. And uh, to be fair, I, I really did focus from a good decade on just my coaching business. Really, that was it. A little bit of property on the side, but not much. So I've been a fairly focused person too, but James is definitely still there. He, you know, he, he, him and his wife, they, they both have their own uh, projects now and that's, they have their dogs and they're really focused. It was a fun 
chat to, to, to talk to James, but it's like, um, you know, it, it, we, it, it is interesting to see different mindsets and the way people, you know, go about living their lives and, and growing their businesses. Um, obviously, I'm learning a lot from him in property investing. So I, I got some great insights uh, about kind of a few tweaks I'm going to do because I'm hoping to go to Montreal. Well, I am going to Montreal in a couple of weeks and I'll spend at least a month, probably two, two and a half to do a bit of repairs on this triplex and sort out all these rental problems, et cetera. But also I want to buy my second property and talking to James made me go, you know what? I think I got to tweak my strategy. I really got to focus on um, my numbers better and probably look to get something I can repair to add value. I think I really want to check out the market when I arrive to see what's what's available. But that's definitely the strategy that James uses and recommends. Um, and I, I, I have, you know, I started following that, but I get distracted. Sometimes I don't want to deal with the renovation part. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to uh, adjust my strategy. I'll talk more about that as I do it. I don't want to dive into my my property investment spiel right now. I'm getting tired, too. I'm losing my voice. So, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. James, you know, the biggest takeaway from him is the focusing on one thing. I, I, I would recommend that to anyone. I, if you get a chance, I have a podcast on uh when to start multiple companies or multiple projects. And in it, I say, it's not something you do when you're brand new. You know, you don't start two businesses at once. You don't start, um, you know, trying to be a freelancer in two areas at once. The more specialized you are, the better you do. The more focused you are, the better you do. And that happened to me too. Like I sold everything off when I saw that my blog coaching teaching business was taking off. A, because I loved it. I was enjoying that more than any other project. B, because the money was there. It was great. C, I had so much untapped potential and I need to get rid of everything. So I sold off all my other websites. I sold off my editing company back then. And that was focus and that was important. So James epitomizes that still too. He's, he's been investing in property consistently, getting better and better at it and growing the size of his deals from a duplex to a triplex to five to 10 to 16 buildings sometimes or 16 apartments all in one building. And you know that, that those are, those are pretty big uh, purchases and same with business, you know, all in on this uh, business with Eben now. And that's his, his main focus and his main, you know, income stream is his revenue generator, which then can fuel his property business. But that story will be shared in my podcast. So make sure you listen to that. Okay, so my notes are at an end and I'm at the end of my day. And that's pretty much what happened today. I've gone from the start to the end. Um, I'd love to know whether that was interesting. You know, leave a comment uh, with whatever vehicle you're on. If you're on Facebook, leave a comment. If you're on YouTube, leave a comment. Heck, send me a tweet, send me an email. Uh, send me a comment on Instagram. I'll probably put a little clip from this on Instagram as well. Um, I just appreciate the feedback. Whether or not you give me any, I'll probably keep doing these videos because I, like I said, I want to make positive habits at night, less uh, wasted time on that couch there watching TV or Netflix, whatever. Um, I'll still do that, but yeah, I, I want to do some of these and I especially want to do it to stay connected with you and hopefully grow my connections. You know, I, I do want to meet more people as I travel this year and I want to show you more of my travels and this can be a part of it. And plus, I want to talk about business behind the scenes. It's my favorite subject. I work on all my projects every day. Uh, as well as wealth creation with things like property investment and uh, angel investing. And I will hope to share a lot of that stuff behind the scenes with you. Okay, I think that's everything I want to cover. I uh, hope that was enjoyable. Maybe we'll do another one tomorrow or the day after. I know I've got stuff on tomorrow night, so it might not happen until next week. It's about to be the weekend. We'll see. But most importantly, let's hope this came out all right with the new video equipment here with the GoPro and the light. And I don't know what I look like right now. There's no camera, you know, there's no reverse flip camera I can look at with the GoPro like some of the other cameras have. So um, maybe I'll need to do a little brightness edits. We'll see. By now you're looking at it. By now you've watched the whole thing. So I'm losing my voice. I'm going to say that's it. Thanks, guys. I, I'll talk to you on another video uh, very soon, no doubt. And uh, keep up the good work. Ciao.